In this video module, we're going to be going through the mapping process where we take an ER diagram uh, and create the corresponding database tables. And the example that we're going to be doing is the music database example that we've covered in class uh, and from the textbook. And so recall that the basic process that we followed um, uh, for the database design process is we go through a requirements analysis phase uh, where we decide what it is we need to do. Uh, what the purpose of the database is and so on. Uh, we then do a conceptual design where we map the requirements onto a model, which we're using ER diagrams, and then the final step is from conceptual to logical design and then implementation. And our focus in this module is going to be on this phase uh, right here. And so we went through this in class. Uh, the basic process, the, over here on the left side, are the requirements. And we use these requirements to generate the ER diagram. And so this is the ER diagram uh, for the music database uh, that we've discussed. And so what we want to talk about now in this video is this next step in the process where we map the ER diagram into the actual database tables and then create the uh, corresponding uh, MySQL uh, database table. So let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is get out of presentation mode so that I can actually type uh, in PowerPoint. And let's look at the process that we're going uh, to use. So the six step process that we have in the book uh, starts with step A, says for each strong entity, create a table and designate the primary key, add attributes as necessary. So in our ER diagram, we can see that the, um, the um, artist entity is the only strong entity here. So let me jump over here for a sec and say let's add some content here. Get rid of that and reformat this just a second. Make the text a little bit smaller. And the step A says, okay, let's create the artist table. Set the primary key as artist ID. And add attributes as necessary. So we have artist name. So that's an attribute. And this is the uh, primary key of the table. And so we have no other strong entities. Uh, and so we go back to our step, our process, and we move on to step B. Step B says, for each weak entity, create a table and include the primary key of the owning tables as foreign keys, add attributes as necessary. So going to our ER diagram, you can see that we have three weak entities, album, track, and played. So we need to add a table for each of those. Let's start with album. And the next step says add the primary key of the parent table or the owning table, which in this case is artist, because artist has the identifying relationship with album. So we need to go to the get the primary key of the artist uh, table, artist ID. This is a foreign key, and it's also a component of the primary key of the album table. And so the primary key of the album table is the combination of artist ID and album ID. And artist ID is a foreign key in the album table. And we have album name. The next table that we have is the track table. Oops. Go back over here. Try that one more time. And the process says, again, add the primary key from the parent table. So in this case, album has the identifying relationship with track. And its primary key is this combination of artist ID and album ID. So I'm going to add that. And now this is also a foreign key. And now to complete the primary key, we have track ID. Other attributes now, track name and time. And so that completes uh, the track table. Final table that we have in this example is the played table. And the process again says uh, add the primary key from the parent table. And so that is in this case the track table because it has the identifying relationship. And so its primary key are these uh, three attributes. So we will copy those down. And now this is a foreign key in the played table. And now we have the played field is part of the primary key.
So now we've completed step B. Remember, let's go back and take a look. Page up. Uh, where's my page up? There we go. Uh, step B again was for each week entity, create a table and include the primary key of the owning or what I call the parent tables as foreign keys, add attributes as necessary. So back in our ER diagram, uh, we did that for the album table, the track table and the play table. And so we've now completed uh, step B. Go back to our process. Step C says for each one-to-one -one relationship, include the primary key of one entity as a foreign key in the other. So we go back and look and we don't have any one-to-one -one relationships because we have one to n, one to n, one to n. So go back to our process and we don't have any of those so we're done with step C. Step D says for each non-identifying one to n relationship. So we go back down and we say this is a one to n but it's identifying. This is a one to n so it's identified, but it's identifying. This is a one to n, and it's identifying. So in our case, we don't have any non-identifying one to n relationships because the album track and played entities were all uh, designated or defined uh, as weak entities. So we don't have any of those. For each m to n relationship, create a new table. Uh, we don't have any m to n relationships. And finally, for each relationship involving more than two entities, create a table with the primary keys, and we don't have any of those either. We don't have any relationships involving uh, multiple tables. And so, let me go back in this mode, and so now we're done with the basic process. We created four tables. We designated primary key um, uh, for the artist table uh, as the single artist ID. For the album table, we have a composite primary key of artist ID and album ID, where artist ID is a foreign key. For the track table, we have a composite primary key of artist ID, album ID, track ID. And finally, for the played table, we have a composite primary key of all, that consists of all four uh, of, uh, of the fields. So again, the thing to note here is how we use the foreign key based on the owning table, or what I call the parent table. So if I pick a particular relationship, like between artist and album, the identifying relationship is from artist to album. And so the artist primary key is a part or a component of the primary key in the album table, and it's also a foreign key. So now that we have the logical design, we have our conceptual design, which is our ER diagram. We have our logical design, which is the specific table structure. The final step is to create the uh, MySQL tables or the MySQL create table script to, um, to actually create the tables in our database. And so to do that, we need to use the MySQL um, um, uh, create table command. And so I've given you two references here. Uh, the, uh, for how to use that or for the complete documentation. One is the Create Tables um, web page. So let's go back here. There's MySQL reference. Here we go. That's that diagram that gives the complete syntax for Create Tables. And so you can look if you have any questions or run into problems. Uh, this is the uh, kind of the definitive place to go to determine um, uh, how to do the script. The second reference I give you describes data types. If we look at our if we look at our uh, task here, you know we have artist ID and artist name and art and album name and track name and time and played and those things. And the first thing we need to do is decide what data types we're going to use. So in other words, when I say artist ID, is that an integer? Is that a floating point? Is it a string? Uh, what do we need to do? Uh, what data type do we want to use? And so the table that uh, the script that we've created basically makes uh, some assumptions about that. Let me show you that in my text editor here. And you can download this create table script. Note that I've called it here create tables. And I'm going to go through this syntax a little bit, but you're going to have to look back at the web page uh, definition of the create tables uh, statement and the definition of the data types to get a complete understanding of what we're doing. So basically uh, this first uh, statement here says drop table if exists artist. So basically uh, if I execute this script in MySQL and the artist table is already there, it's going to drop the table. So it, it essentially gets rid of the table if it exists. If we don't have this statement and we try to execute the script and the table exists, we'll get an error saying that the table already exists. 
So we're going to create our artist table. And we call that our artist table had two fields, artist ID and artist name. And so I've designated artist ID to be an unsigned integer. That's what int unsigned means, is an unsigned integer. The next designation here says not null, which basically is saying that this cannot be a null value, so you have to have a value. And the default value uh, is zero. So I read this as int unsigned not null default zero. Uh, and um, that's also designated as the primary key. So look down at the final statement where we say the primary key is artist ID. The artist name is a char 128. So this is a character string of maximum length 128. And I've also designated that to be not null. And so if you look at this statement, it starts here with create table and ends here with the semicolon. And so this is the statement that we would use to create the artist table. So once again, note that we created the two fields first and then define the primary key uh, using one of the fields. So for the uh, next table, uh, let's go back to our mapping here. Uh, we have the album table and it has a composite primary key uh, and an album name. So we have the artist ID and the album ID and the album name. So in our create table script. Again, we have the drop table if exists, in case that table already exists. And then I use the create uh, album this time. So album gives it the table name. I add my field. So artist ID. Note, since I'm using this as a foreign key, I use the exact same designation. Int unsigned not null default zero. Uh, it has to be the exact same data type. I use the same data type for album ID. So I'm going to use an unsigned integer for the album name. Again, I use a character 128. This time I have a composite primary key. So this is artist ID comma album ID says to set these two fields together as the primary key. Note also that we have designated uh, in our diagram or in our logical design foreign keys Right? And so this is a foreign key from this table. In our, in our MySQL scripts, we're not going to formally define those foreign keys. Uh, you can do that, and you can have MySQL impose what are called foreign key constraints, uh, but we're not going to do that uh, for this example. And I'll talk about that a little bit more in class uh, on Thursday. So we do the same thing for the uh, remaining two tables. Uh, we have create the track table. So we have the track ID, track name, artist ID, album ID, which is our primary key. So we have artist ID, album ID, track ID, track name, nothing unusual there. Track time, we have a different data type. I have a decimal 52, so this is a uh, five digit decimal uh, value with two uh, digits to the right of the decimal point. So that gives my level of uh, significance. And so that's essentially a fixed size floating point number. So we're just tracking the time uh, in seconds. And lastly, we have the uh, play table. And the only thing unusual or different about the play table here is that we use the timestamp field. And that gives me the time played. So the timestamp is a data type in MySQL, which includes the date, so the calendar date, like 2017, 11, 10, uh, and the time of day, so maybe 23, 10, 05, or something like that. So it gives me the timestamp at which uh, the, the, the song was played. And so I've created this script in a file called createtables.sql. So finally, let's look at how we can use this create table script to actually create the tables. So I'm going to go, let's see, back to the command prompt. And here's my file. So if I just say type, type create tables.sql, there it is, same the same file that we just looked at. Note here I'm in the temp directory and I have that uh, create tables.sql file in this directory. So I'm just going to start MySQL and start it with my database. We just start it that way. Note that I didn't have to do the username or password or host name because I'm using an options file so that all of that stuff is uh, put in automatic. I could just as easily have put all of that in the, in the command line. So here I am in my table, in my database. If I do show tables, um, show tables, you can see the tables in my database and I have, uh, I don't have any of the tables for the uh, for the music database yet. Uh, so there, I basically have two uh, ways that I can do this. One is that I can just from within the MySQL monitor use the source command. 
So I can just source create table.sql. So source basically says, look in the current directory, and if the file exists, just ec read and execute the file command by command. And if I do that, you can see that it uh, created my corresponding table. So now when I do show tables, the tables are there. There's uh, album, artist, uh, played, uh, and track. I can see the table structure by using the describe statement. Describe artist. And you can see I have my two fields. And now I have the definition here, primary key under the key column. If I describe album, now I have artist ID and album ID. And both of those are designated as primary keys. My album name, describe track. Again, primary key consists now of composite of three uh, fields. Describe played. Uh, that gives me the um, uh, that gives me the four uh, 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 four component primary key. So the second way I'm going to do this, if I get out of my SQL, so just get out of there, I can execute it from the command line by using the redirection operator like we did in class. So I can do my SQL, uh, Jeff DB, and then redirect, create tables, dot SQL. And so note that I'm doing this from the, from the command prompt. I'm not inside the monitor. And when I execute that command, it... Uh, uh, um, opens up the, the monitor, uh, redirects the commands in the create table script, and then closes, and I end up back at the command prompt. And I can now do my SQL, db, show tables, and of course, uh, they're still there. Uh, so that's the basic process that we're going to use uh, to, create, uh, to create the tables. And so note again, uh, you're going to have to look in the uh, documentation to get a complete understanding of what these uh, uh, data types mean and how to select data types and there are lots and lots of different uh, data types and different structures uh, that you can use. Note that when I create the database scripts like this create tables I generally start with one that I already have. So if I was going to do another database I would probably read in the create tables for the music database and then just go through and rename things because you're going to see that the, the, the scripts to create the tables basically have the same structure. The only thing that changes are the specific field names and the table names and then the specific primary keys and the relationships between the um, uh, between the different tables. And so in summary, if we go back and look at what we did. Uh, we talked about the requirements analysis to conceptual design in class. And what we covered in this video module is really the conceptual design to logical design, where we took the the um, ER diagram, which is our conceptual design, followed the process, the six-step process. Uh, in our case, we only had step A and step B because we had strong entities and weak entities, and we didn't have examples of any of these other uh, cases uh, for this example. Uh, and then we created the table structure, created the individual tables, designated the primary keys and foreign keys, added the additional attributes. And the final step was to decide on the data types, uh, and then once we did that, we created the MySQL uh, command to actually create the tables.